It was just a couple of days ago now when NT Creates gave us a news update on Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 and announced Blaster Master 03 at New Game Plus Expo 2021. Suffice to say, both of these announcements are super duper hype, and this event also marked the first public gameplay demo for Azure Striker Gunvolt 3. And now it's time to break it all down and see what kind of details we can find in both the trailer and the gameplay footage. In this video, I'll be covering the Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 content, and in an upcoming video, I will also cover Blaster Master 03. Blaster Master isn't necessarily a Mega Man like, but a lot of people love that series since it started, and I am a huge fan of Blaster Master 0 as well, so I want to cover it mostly for me, because I love talking about games I like. Without further fumbling around then, Let's hit the ground with Thunder and get to the analysis. Right off the bat, KJ Inafune himself, who by the way is the action director for the Gunvolt series, blesses the stream with his presence and introduces yet another action director for Gunvolt 3, Hiroki Miyazawa, who served as the series director for Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1 and 2. Along with that introduction and commenting that development is going well, Itafune also hits us with a reality check that Gunvolt 3 is coming in 2022, not this year. Which may come as a disappointment for some, but to me, I 100% expected it. When we saw Gunvolt 3 last year, you could tell it was very early on. Similar to the first time they show off Gunvolt Chronicles Luma's Avenger X, and we really didn't get much details about it until a year later. So color me surprised they even talked about Gunvolt 3 at all at NGPX. Because you can tell there's a lot of work left to be done. On that note, it is important to point out a lot of the things we're going to be talking about with both the trailer and the gameplay demo is that pretty much all this footage is coming from very early builds of the game. Hiroki Miyazawa himself said that there has been a lot of changes with Gunvolt 3 even from the demo we've seen. In other words, as the trailers always say, this footage is not necessarily reflective of the final game. Anything can change from here to the final release. With that disclaimer out of the way then, let's dive into the trailer. Which shows us very similar scenes to what we have experienced with the initial reveal trailer. The main new content you're going to see here is the two new bosses, which seem to be inhabiting mech suits of armor this time around. But other than that, there's not much else we really know about them. Who they work for, what items they use to transform, we don't even know their names. And that's going to be a common theme here going forward with this analysis. Because Integrates actually did a bang up job of hiding the lore from us this time around. We know that Gunvolt works for Sumeragi now, there's a long tailed doggo that suspiciously looks like GV. And we actually see that same animal following Kieran around during her gameplay. But other than that, yeah, that's all stuff we talked about with the original trailer. There isn't all that much more to gleam lore-wise from all of this footage. The only observation I could make was that Kieran's health bar features a organization symbol that is clearly not Sumeragi. You can see with Gunvolt's health bar that he does have the Sumeragi logo there. With a brief search, I couldn't find a match for the organization that Kirin apparently works for. We also never see Kirin and Gunvolt on screen together either. So the question is raised, are Kirin and Gunvolt working for separate entities? And if they are, are they working together in this game or are they working against each other? If you listen to all the PR talk about this game, they are definitely touting Kirin as the heroine of this story. But not a lot is said about the title character himself, GV, which is suspicious to say the least. Could it be that GV is truly the villain campaign of this story, now that he works for Sumeragi? Once again, I point out the long-tailed doggo that follows Kirin around. It's just a theory, a game theory. But what if the animal is the real Gunvolt, and the GV that we play as in this game is revealed to be either an evil clone of some sort, or he's being possessed by someone. As a mob, anyone? Crazy theories aside, something is definitely up with this paradigm shift that the trailer mentions. Perhaps when they say paradigm shift, they mean it quite literally. 
We'll find out though, we will. And let's not forget that Lumen is alive once again. And she is even found singing her songs once again for the playable characters in the demo. How in the world did she come back? That's another big mystery. Maybe it has something to do with why GV has joined Sumeragi? Possibly. That's pretty much all we got for lore speculation for now though. The rest of this analysis is going to be focused on solely the gameplay and the bosses themselves. So let's get into it. Beginning with the trailer, as we covered before, GV's flash field has been tweaked to be more precise, sending individual bolts of lightning at tagged foes. There is also the unique dash that we've seen before. This appears to be a new way for GV to tag enemies. With regular enemies, GV is seen warping to the other side of the enemy upon contact. And if you listen closely to the audio, you can hear that little ding that signifies that you tagged. In the interstage boss fight, however, Gunvol air dashes at an angle, and when he makes contact with the boss, he bounces off of the body of the boss instead, exactly the same way that Copen does. You even hear similar sound effects from Copen's gameplay. What's interesting to me here is that GV did not follow a straight path when he air dashed which indicates to me that Gunvolt automatically locked on to the boss when he air dashed at it. Again, just like Copen. So it seems like GV is taking some ideas from Copen's own playbook. This addition to Gunvolt's tagging options is likely because, as localization producer Matt Papa explains during the demo, since Gunvolt has always been a fast-paced action game, the developers really want to cut down on the times that you bump into enemies and take contact damage. And that was the reason that they gave for the talisman mechanic that we'll talk about in just a moment with Kirin. But my guess is Gunvolt now being able to tag enemies by dashing is also part of that philosophy. As for the whole warping behind enemies thing, perhaps that can be activated with a button command or the game automatically detects if it's a smaller enemy or a large one, and how much space you'll have to perform the warp. Unfortunately, we didn't get any live gameplay footage of Gunvolt, just what we see in the trailer, so that is going to remain unanswered for now. My last observation about Gunvolt's gameplay is the second bar underneath his health. During the trailer, you see it start at 100%, and it increases by 1% per second until it reaches 200%. Meanwhile, in Kieran's gameplay, that second bar is present, but it always stays at 0% no matter what she does. Throughout the entire live gameplay demo, it not only never budges, but it's never really explained what it's for either. So, two possibilities. One, it could be tied to a GV exclusive ability, or two, it's just a quirk of the early demo and it hasn't been implemented for Kirin yet. That does it for the trailer. Now we're going to talk about that live demo, which will cover Kirin, two stages, and the two bosses that we saw during the trailer. So this demo is actually the one that was shown behind closed doors at an event in Japan a couple of months ago. This is obvious from the icon seen on the title screen, telling players not to take photos or video of the demo. Which is exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, whoops. Anyway, Match Papa introduces the new action director, Hiroki Mirazawa, onto the stage, where he mentions the pressure that he feels working with Inafune and director Suda on this game. Then we're off to the races as the demo begins with the first stage, which Matt describes as a Christmassy town. He also notes that there are no official English localized names for any of the stages or the bosses right now. And since he is the localization guy on the game, I believe him and so we're not going to worry about names too much this time around. Alright, let's talk about Kieran. To sum it up, she's basically Zero, but in the Gunvolt style, with her multiple sword slash combos. Hoo ha hoo! The developers of the Gunvolt series always wanted to introduce a melee-based character into the series, and that dream has finally come into fruition with Kirin. We do also have Blade from Gunvolt Chronicles Lumers Avenger X, but Kirin is definitely the first playable melee-type character we've had. Here's hoping Blade becomes playable in a Lumers Avenger X sequel though. Anyway, the mechanic with Kirin that really shakes things up is the Talisman which you can just mash like crazy. 
When you tag an enemy with the talisman, it creates a circle around them and weakens their abilities. We see two colors for the circles, yellow and red. When the circle is yellow, Kirin will now deal extra damage to that tagged foe. But, most importantly, when the circle is red, it essentially disables that enemy's hitbox and now you will no longer take any contact damage from them. In fact, they'll just phase right through you. This is a great counter to enemies that get up close and personal, but you're still gonna have to be careful around enemies with ranged attacks because projectiles will still damage you. In addition, weakening enemies with the talisman, then defeating them, is how you get the EX kill bonus points with Kirin. And like we talked about earlier with GV, this talisman mechanic was specifically introduced to stop players from smacking into enemies so much as the gameplay is really fast paced. And it does make sense why they would want to do this with Kirin's gameplay. Do you remember playing through the Mega Man X and Zero series and accidentally smacking Ryan to enemies at Zero? Now imagine that with the even more fast paced gameplay of the Gunvolt series. Yeah, I can see where they're getting at. That all said, the whole balancing of the gameplay and the mechanics are still being worked on. So while talismans look sort of broken in this demo, that might not be the case in the final game. Later in the quote unquote Christmas Town stage, it is confirmed that Lumen is indeed back singing her songs when Kirin reaches 1000 kudos points. Once again, I don't know if this is just a quirk of the demo or if Kirin actually does know Lumen in the game and maybe she is working with GV somehow. Or maybe Lumen is helping Kirin because that animal that follows her around is GV? Hmm. Either way, she is alive again for some reason, somehow. We'll just have to find out why later on, won't we? Speaking of kudos points, this feels like the third or fourth time I've said it, but this might just be a quirk of the demo once again. That said, in the footage here, Kirin doesn't lose any kudos at all when she passes checkpoints. Whereas in every other game in the Gunvolt series, you always cashed in your kudos points right when you hit the checkpoint. Which is why one of the strategies for high score runs was actively avoiding the checkpoints. This time around however, the checkpoints are deliberately put right in your way. So it's questionable whether they can even be skipped, at least as of this demo build. And if you can't skip them, well yeah, it makes sense why you can't cash in your kudos points right then and there. They did mention that this is being played on a higher difficulty, which also explains why Kirin doesn't have the pervasion ability here. Which by the way, pervasion is confirmed for Kirin in the final game. So this whole kudos and checkpoint thing could just be a quirk of the higher difficulty as well. After some hacking and slashing, we come face to face with our very first boss which is actually the very first one that NT developed for this game. This boss, with no name as of yet, has a Grim Reaper and Horror motif, taken to the skies with wings and claws with a dark aura to boot. It actually reminds me of Corvus from Mega Man Star Force 3. One nice detail is when the boss dashes through the air, it leaves behind a digital trail effect. I like that. Speaking of, in general, they really amped up the graphics for Gunvolt 3. Like the snow effect during the Christmassy Town stage, the backgrounds have more detail. It can be subtle at times, but there is a definite improvement here, especially over the 3DS titles and even Luminous Adventure X. Now let's break down the different moves that the boss performs. With the first attack, the boss drops green flames that feature spooky faces from the sky. The flames will then group together and move either left or right shortly after landing. I hope you didn't forget that Kirin can swat away projectiles with her sword because that's going to become handy in boss fights as she can do the same with many attacks including this one. Here comes attack number two. The boss summons bits from his body which then transform into grim reapers with praying mantis like hands that move across the screen, forcing Kirin to either jump over them or dunk under them. Next is the third attack. The boss summons more bits that crash to the ground, causing spooky claws to come up from underneath for damage. They reach quite high too. Kirin can also deflect the bits away to stop the claws from spawning. The last main attack we see here is when the boss lands on the ground and throws multiple sides in front of him, 
that return like a boomerang. Last but not least, we have the SP skill, Death Procession. During this skill, the boss will teleport around while swinging his double-sided scythe. Before summoning an awesome motorcycle with green flames and everything that he hops on and speeds across the bottom portions of the screen with. You do get an opportunity to counterattack for some damage during this SP skill, and using the talismans can help you locate the boss during the first stage of the skill while he is teleporting around in the darkness. Overall, I really do like that Grim Reaper motif of the boss and the design is pretty darn cool. But man, wait until we get to the second boss. But first we gotta talk about the second stage real quick. Which takes us to a rundown refinery that's seen some better days, quote unquote. Fire traps and falling platforms are the call of the day here. You may notice this stage is also more vertical in nature than past stages in the Gunvolt series. And Matt Papa says that is because they are trying to include more vertical type stages to complement Kieran's gameplay in order to mix things up as opposed to doing the traditional left to right affair all the time. And perhaps to complement that vertical gameplay, you may have noticed throughout the footage that the wall jump is a bit more floaty than in the past. The wall kicking in the previous Gunball games have definitely had a lot more weight to them, which to me felt a little more jank compared to say the Mega Man X series. So to me, I think I like the floatier jumps better. But what do you think? Anyway, let's talk about the boss. Which, I'm just going to put this out there right from the get-go. This guy reminds me a lot of Magma Dragoon from Mega Man X4. With the first attack, the boss punches the ground, creating a line of pillars before it. Basically, it's Melt Creeper from X8. But here's where we get into the Magma Dragoon references. As the second main attack sees the boss performing a fiery dragon punch up into the air into a downward flame kick that is definitely straight out of Magma Dragoon's moveset. Continuing with the references, this boss also doesn't like you hanging out on the walls to avoid it. The boss will change the battlefield with the dirt skill, putting X's over the walls, and changing gravity itself to pull you towards itself. Heck, this boss is apparently a Zero fan as well. With the last attack featuring the boss jumping up, slamming its fist into the ground, and causing debris to crash on both sides of it. Seem familiar? And lastly, the SP skill, which was translated by Sidier to be Raw Field Deployment, let us have a 1 vs 1 match. However, we don't get to see what the skill actually does because it has been unfinished at the time of the demo, so it doesn't actually do anything. And with that downer, that's pretty much it for the analysis of the Gunvolt 3 footage and trailer. Overall, I am liking what I'm seeing a lot. Kieran looks fun to play, and I think the talisman mechanic of basically turning off hitboxes of enemies is pretty dope. As usual, the lore is super interesting, and there's a lot of fan theories going on out there of what's actually going to happen in this game. And I know the folks at Inti Craze are eating that up. They love that stuff. I'm also a fan of the boss design. I like me some robots, and these guys look the closest to actual robot masters than they have ever been. Also can't go wrong with a Magma Dragoon slash Street Fighter reference. Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 will be coming in 2020, and the game is being developed with the Nintendo Switch in mind, so in terms of platforms, that is a safe bet for now. But Integrates has been working to release more of their games on more platforms. And if this game is to follow in the footsteps of Luminous Avenger X and Blaster Master Zero 3 more recently, there's a good chance you'll see this game on PlayStation 4, PC, like Steam and the Epic Game Store as well. Maybe even Xbox if we're lucky. Now that my breakdown is done, I want to hear what you guys think of all the Gunvolt goodness we just got. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and I want to thank you so much for watching. For more on Azure Striker Gunvolt 3, and my upcoming Blaster Master Zero 3 breakdown and analysis, which I'm really excited to talk about because there's some interesting stuff there as well, BMZ is a lot of fun you guys, you should play. And more content like, you know, Mega Man, stay tuned to Shadowrock ZX. Until the next video, rock on! And beyond the path towards hope lies greater possibilities. So don't give up and have a great day.